Hello, the Darkness 344 here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a very basic tutorial on this parallel to serial data encoder. So over here, we have the encoder, and as you can see, five blocks wide, three blocks tall, and well, infinitely expandable along, well, however many bits you want, you can just add extra. Over here, have a basic example of it with a, like a signal bit, just to tell the de decoder, like that there's data coming which I'll also show how to add on. And let's just put a number in. So say, let's put this number in. 1101011. As you can see, at the moment, there's nothing in it. But when we uh, send it, it'll send it along one line, uh, one tick per bit. And as you can see, we have the result. So 1101011. The other good thing about this um, encoder is that you can change like the, the rate that you send information at. So if you didn't want to do it one tick per bit, which I, that would be what you would send it at. I'm not sure why you'd actually send it any slower, but you could change it to like two ticks per bit, for instance. This will send one bit every two ticks, though I, I would recommend just doing one tick per bit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is like find the space where you're going to want to build it and we're going to use observers because well they're very useful for this sort of thing so i'm just going to build a module of eight so one two three four five six seven eight and then once we've built these observers we're going to want to if you only want it to be a one tick per bit then you can build a line of observers like this so as you can see when i change the state it'll go like that though if if you want it to be adjustable which is what we'll be doing in this tutorial uh, just place a block down like this go across like this make sure they're solid blocks and we can have rest and repeat to start like this of course to change like the rates you'd if I wanted it two ticks instead of one tick I would put two ticks on all these repeaters if I wanted three ticks I'd put three ticks on all the repeaters etc you know so then what we're going to want to do place resistant torches along here into the observer then we're going to want to have uh, sticky pistons like this so this is bedrock only unfortunately I'll try design one for Java at some point maybe but once we have the sticky pistons like this we're going to place solid blocks on top and then we're going to get out glass blocks or slabs possibly just any like transparent block which won't when you have like redstone on top it will not power these pistons so if I say like turn this piston off as you can see it doesn't get powered by this because it's a transparent block so let me just place that back so we're gonna have these transparent blocks along here and there we go now we're just gonna stick some levers here and of course you can put lamps under these if you really want uh, just for more visual display and now we're just gonna build like a very basic T flip-flop over here so let's just um, use uh, let's say this design So we have a repeater facing into here on four ticks repeater facing this way on four ticks Then place a repeater on one tick into this repeater uh, To your stone dust like this Block here rest and torch So it kind of makes like a clock like this then we're gonna block up like this and another rest and torch into this one so it locks this repeater and if, as long as you use the stone button it should just work as a T-flip flop like this. Of course, you can use a different T-flip flop design. And the reason we use the T-flip flop here is because of these observers. They'll, they'll activate if we only send in a pulse. They'll activate twice, and that's not what we want. So now that this is finished, we can, of course, test it. So since we're sending nothing in at the moment, uh, we'll have nothing out like this. Though if we, say, put some data in like this, as we can see, we get it encoded into serial. And of course you can have repeaters and go over to wherever your decoder is, or even like a display for instance. However, say say our decoder actually needs a, a signal bit, which is like the the bit just to, to tell the, the, the decoder that there's data coming in. What we can do is just modify the first bit. So we're gonna take off that lever, take off this, a torch and break that. And there we go, it's basically done. So whenever we send one in, 
this bit will always activate as you can see it always activates and that's just because it's basically permanently on just to say that data is going to be set so even if we're sending all zeros you will see a pulse of a one like that and so we send some zeros and some ones there will always be that pulse just to tell the decoder that there's something coming in so i hope this tutorial helped if you're making one of these serial devices but yeah thanks for watching please like and subscribe and i'm out